we will start with the new chapter of geometry trigonometry will start okay can you see the screen yes okay so in your ninth standard you must have already studied a little bit about trigonometry yes is it have you yes yes uh, what do you know about trigonometry uh, sine cos tan yeah we have something sine something cos something tan sine something is, i guess uh, opposite upon hypotenuse yes okay and okay formulas cos is adjacent adjacent upon uh hypotenuse yeah correct and, these are uh, formulas yeah. ratios yeah and tan is adjacent upon opposite upon adjacent okay so you know some formulas and all. Okay, we will start with the very basic from the beginning. What is the meaning of trigonometry? And then we will eventually study the ratios. What are trigonometric ratios, trigonometric identities? And then we will start solving with the sum. Now, first, whenever you study trigonometry, the question that you have to ask yourself is why is trigonometry needed and where it is used? Then only learning this will make some sense. So we'll start with where it is used. So if you see this picture, what can you see in this picture? A building and a person. Yes, there is a building and there is a person. Now, if you want to find, suppose, the height of the building. Now, it is very difficult to take a measuring tape or any measuring instrument and to measure this building. It is impossible. So the question arises is what? will you use and how will you find out the height of this building now this is answered by trigonometry so finding the height of those objects which is not possible to find out by using normal measuring instruments that is one method now how to do it we'll see it in the examples okay next what can you see in this picture Uh, a dam and uh, like a side of the river and the dam and the person yes. on the bridge. Yes. Okay. Now, if you want to find what is the width of this bridge, or oh, sorry, of uh, the distance between the two banks of the river. Okay. So suppose if this point is, this is the right hand side bank. And this is suppose if it is a left hand side bank, if you are, if you want to know the width of this river, then obviously it is difficult to use any measuring instrument to find out the width. Here also comes the application of trigonometry. So now how we will use trigonometry, we'll see that when we are solving concrete examples. First, understand the word trigonometry what is the meaning of the word trigonometry if you divide now in the pictures that we see to calculate the height of the building and also the width of the riverbed we use trigonometry trigonometry is divi divided into three it's uh, segregated into three sections so there are three trigo tri that means three gona means sides so three sides and metron means measures. Means we are trigonometry is a study of a three-sided figure or the measures of a three-sided figure. Is the word clear? Did you understand trigonometry? Yes? Okay. Yes. So trigonometry is concerned with relationship between sides and angles now why triangles 
because a three sided figure tri is obviously a three sided triangle. closed figure is a triangle is a triangle yes so trigonometry is concerned with relationship between the sides of the triangle and the angles of the triangles so you must have studied this in your ninth st standard already will revise it and that is called as a trigonometric ratios so the first is uh, all of this was not taught in ninth like uh, mm -hmm. cosec set and all no 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 only sine and cos and all of that no only three okay You must so, have... I guess it was not even mentioned that uh, such things are there to, in the school. Okay. okay, you must have studied about sine and sine ratio, cos ratio. Yeah, sine, cos, and tan three were taught. Three were and just taught. usage of those, yeah. Okay. Now, sine, cos, tan. Then you have three more, cosec, sec, and cot. These are all trigonometric ratios. Now, whenever we say ratio, what comes into your mind? Something ratio. upon something. Yes, fraction. something upon something, a fraction, or something with a numerator and denominator, a fraction. So, you must have studied sine ratio. As you said before, sine ratio is opposite upon hypotenuse correct so now in trigonometry we usually work with right angles okay or we only work with right angles okay the triangles that are considered in trigonometry are only right angles so in a right angle this would be the 90 degree and if i name it suppose a b and c this angle would be theta then sine theta is a ratio of opposite side upon the hypotenuse side so for theta can you tell me which is the opposite side opposite a b a b correct and the hypotenuse is uh, AC. AC. So sine theta ratio is opposite upon hypotenuse. This you may be knowing already. Yes. Next is cos. Can you tell me what ratio is cos? Adjacent upon hypotenuse. Correct adjacent upon hypotenuse. Now for this theta, which is the adjacent side? And BC upon yeah. AC. Correct, BC upon AC. So cos theta is a ratio, cos ratio is adjacent upon hypotenuse. Then is tan. What is tan, do you remember? Opposite upon adjacent opposite upon adjacent so for this figure for this theta which is opposite and which is adjacent a b upon a c correct no a c is a hypotenuse no, 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 no. sorry 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 uh, opposite upon adjacent so a b upon b c correct a b upon b c so these were the three trigonometric ratios which you studied so sine theta is opposite upon hypotenuse cos theta is adjacent upon hypotenuse, tan theta is opposite upon adjacent. Now, all of this, uh, I think we were taught, but I don't remember this. This sin theta is cos 90 minus yeah, theta. cos 90 minus, we had made a table and then we were told that x, 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 like slant, slant ones are like we used to write sine theta, then we used to write cos 90 minus theta, all of hmm. that. Like. Yeah. Okay, but before this, I want you to know the other ratios also. 
uh, and the remaining others are first is COSEC. COSEC data. Now, one thing you have to remember, sine and COSEC are reciprocal. COSEC. Yeah, reciprocal. Are reciprocals of each other. Okay. Then, cos and sec are reciprocals of each other. If I don't keep this in mind, I will not be able to make cosec and sec. No. If I just remember sine, sine cos, cosec and sec. If you just remember, if, but this, this, this property you need to remember, sine and cos, they are reciprocals oh. of each other. Okay, okay. And lastly, we have tan and cot. cot. These are reciprocals of each other. So the exact formula so sine theta, we can write it like this. Sine theta is equal to one upon cosec theta. Or screen share has uh, become blank. Just one second. You stop screen sharing. How about now? Yeah, it's loading, it's loading. Yeah, I can see. Okay, so we'll write it in this way. Sine theta is one upon cosec theta or cosec theta is one upon sine theta. This is a meaning that sine and cos are reciprocals of each other, fine? Then how sine and cosec sine upon one one upon cos cosec. So if you do the rep, how yeah reciprocal reciprocal sine okay. theta one upon cosec theta or cosec theta one upon sine theta. This is the meaning that sine okay, and okay. cos both are reciprocals of each other. Yeah, got. It. Then you have cos. Cos theta is one upon sec theta or Sec theta. sec theta is equal to one upon cos. Sec theta is equal to one upon cos. Then tan and cot are reciprocals of each other. So tan theta is equal to one upon cot theta or you can say cot theta is equal to one upon tan theta. I hope this reciprocal relationship is clear. These I'll call it as reciprocal formulas. Fine. Okay. Now uh, the ratio formulas. Have you tried all of this? I will give you time to write. I will tell you when okay, to write. Fine. But now just pay attention here. Okay. Now, since you know sine and cosec are reciprocals of each other, what would be the ratio of cosec theta? Look at this. Take the reciprocal. So cosec theta would be cosec would be interchange the numerator and denominator. Hypotenuse upon a opposer? Yes, yes. Hypotenuse. Cosec is a reciprocal of? Sine. Uh, sine. Okay. So you Over the in interchange. Uh, C-O-S-E, so I thought, okay, fine. So interchange this, so this will become hypotenuse upon opposite. Now, can you tell me what would be for sec theta then? Uh, sorry, uh, hypotenuse upon adjacent. Correct, hypotenuse upon adjacent. And lastly, what about cot theta? Adjacent upon opposite. Adjacent upon opposite. So this is the reciprocal, these are the ratio formulas, trigonometric ratios, and this is called as a reciprocal formulas. Is this clear? Have you understood this all formulas? 
Okay, now there is one trick to remember this. I am, uh, I'll tell you that trick. Do you know what it is? Any word? Uh, no, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so there is a word. You have to just remember this word, Osha Chota. Now just look at the center. So this will represent sign. This will represent cause. This will represent tan. A sign, cause, tan. O means opposite. H means hypotenuse. And A means uh, adjacent. So sine theta is opposite upon adjacent. So look at this. Cos theta is adjacent upon hypotenuse. So look at this. Tan theta is opposite upon adjacent. Look at this. Now, since you know sine and cosec are reciprocals of each other, cosec theta would be hypotenuse upon opposite. So look at this. Sec theta will be hypotenuse upon adjacent. So look at this. And lastly, cot theta would be adjacent upon opposite. And then that is the last one. Yes. Did you understand this? Yes, but how will I, I just write it in the paper on the top? Yes, yes. You, you have to make a rough work in your uh, exam. Okay. You can make a rough work column and write it over there and you will be able to do this thing. Okay. Right. But did you understand this? Yes. Okay. Now I want you to write this all down. So for this, you write it as give the heading as ratio formulas. What do I write as a heading? Ratio formulas. And this is the reciprocal formulas. Chapter 6, right? Yes, uh, chapter 6. If you want, you can write this as well. So just the meaning of the word trigonometry. This. Write down this.
Yeah, you can go to that page. Yes, this. I have to write that uh, word also. Yes.
Да. Okay, so I'll just erase this. All of this like sine theta equals to uh, all of that was given us in the form of a table. And like it would be that if sine is over here, then slant to it, it would be the answer. So it would be easy to remember. Yeah, I don't recollect this trick of yours, what you're saying. I'll, I'll just see exactly how it goes. Okay, but before that, uh, more two formulas. Uh, one is learning so many formulas are there so many sums for those so many formulas yes there are yes and then if you plan to take science then uh, yes you will be using this at that time extensively you'll be using these formulas in maths as well as physics later on okay so we have one more formula sine theta uh, tan theta is equal to sine theta upon cos theta. Do you remember this? No, I don't remember it, but like, yeah. Yeah, so we have one more formula that says sine theta is equal to sine theta upon cos theta. That means if you divide sine theta and cos theta, okay, if you divide sine theta and cos theta, if you divide them, so what is sine theta? If you see here, sine theta is opposite upon hypotenuse. And cos theta, if you see, cos theta is adjacent upon hypotenuse. So in the numerator and in the denominator, if you see, there are fractions. And in both the fractions, hypotenuse is in the denominator. So denominator, denominator will get cancelled. And you will be left with opposite upon adjacent. But what is this? tan theta. So this is tan theta. Understood. This is how we get the formula. Tan theta is sine theta upon cos theta. Fine. So I would just write down this formula. There's no need to write down this working. I just wanted you to understand it. Clear? Write down this tan theta. Can I raise it? Yeah. Okay. Now next is uh, tan and which ratio are reciprocal of each other? tan and see what you have written tan cot. and cot so tan and cot are reciprocals of each other so what so would much be information right now I'm, I'm lost right now yeah we'll go slow then we'll go slow so what would be cot theta look at the look what you have written look and answer so tan and cot are reciprocals of each other correct Yes. yes. So in terms of sine and cos, how will this formula change? Tan. Tan and cot are reciprocals of each other. We know that. Correct? Now tan theta is sine theta upon cos theta. Yes? 
So cot theta is also equal to sine upon cos theta. No, reciprocal, reciprocal. Cos theta upon sine theta. Yes, cos theta upon sine theta. So what these formulas are called, these formulas are called tan theta and cot theta in terms of sine and cos. Okay, I'll write it down here. Tan theta and cot theta in terms of sine theta and cos theta. Did you understand these formulas? Yes. Okay, same way we can derive it. Okay, we can derive it. So whenever I say tan theta in terms of sine and cos, then you should remember tan theta is sine theta upon cos theta and cot theta is cos upon sine. Okay, they are opposites of each other. Clear? Will you remember this? Okay. So till now, which formulas we have studied? We have studied the ratios formula. Second, the reciprocals formula. And this third one, I call I will call it as tan theta, cot theta in terms of sine and cos. Okay, tan in terms of sine and cos. So tan theta is sine theta upon cos theta. Cot theta is cos theta upon sine theta. Okay, I hope no confusions. Okay, now whatever formulas you have written have till now. Uh, yeah, right and cot. Yeah, yeah, right cot theta, yes. Yeah. Okay. So whatever formulas we have written till now, I want you to go through all of them. Once you are done, let me know. So I'll erase this. Okay. These formulas we'll see later on. What are these formulas? Okay, I want you to revise trigonometric identities. You must have studied trigonometric identities. Do you remember? I don't remember. No? Okay. So the first trigonometric identity is sine square theta plus cos square theta. Cos square theta is, is equal to one. One. Correct. Then we have one more trigonometric identity. What is the it? This is breaking. I can't hear you. Now? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Your voice is breaking. Yeah, the second one would... Uh, yes, can you hear me now? Yes, okay. So we have three main trigonometric identities. From that, just remember the first one. From the first one, you can bring out the other two. This first one is easy. Sine square theta plus cos square theta is equal to one. 
Yes. Now to get the second one, suppose if you don't remember, what you do is this first identity, you just divide entire equation or entire first identity by sine square theta. So divide this by sine square theta, this by sine square theta. Okay, wait, uh, before, before we do this, I want you to write along with me only. Write the heading trigonometric identity and write the first formula. Sine square theta plus cos square theta is equal to one. Write down this. Once done, let me know. Yeah. Done. Okay. Now to find, suppose you do not remember the second identity from the first identity, you can bring the second one. Okay. Just understand first what I do. So first you divide entire equation by sine square theta. So this upon sine square theta and this upon sine square theta. Okay. Now here sine square, sine square cancelled, you will have one plus what is cos upon sine? We just studied the formula. Cos upon sine is? Yeah, C, C. Unmute yourself and tell me the answer. Cot theta. Cot. Okay, so this is cot. But if you see it is square uh, both in the numerator and denominator. So this will become cot, cot square theta. And then from the reciprocal formula, what is one upon sine? Cosec. Cosec. So this will become, so since this is one upon sine square, this will become cosec square theta. So this is the second identity, which you have to remember. One plus cot square theta is equal to cosec the square pencil, theta. Can I Yes. Sorry, sorry. With the pencil, yeah. can I just... Uh... Yeah. Do it. So you just have to remember the first one. If you forget the second and third one, you can just derive it. Yeah, done. Okay, now the third one. Okay, I'll erase this. So for the second identity, it is the second equation also. Yeah. Second one. Second one we no no, no, no second no, one. Okay. Is, uh, one plus cot square theta is equal to cosec. This we got second one from the first one. So for this, we divided it by sine square. Now for the third one, you divided by, can you guess? In this, we had a sine. So we divided by sine, which is the second. Are you speaking? Yes. Can, can you hear? Actually, your voice too is breaking. Can you hear me? No? Can you hear me? Can you hear?
Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Can you see the screen? Um, yeah, now I can. Okay, so for the first, for the second identity, now if you see this equation, it has sine and cos. Okay, it has sine and it has cos. So to get the second one, we divided it by sine. To get the third one, we should divide it by, can you tell me what? Cos. So you divide by cos square. So cos square theta upon cos square theta. This also upon cos square theta. Now, what is sine upon cos? We just did that formula. Tan. 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 So this will become tan square theta plus cos cos cancel. This is one. And the reciprocal formula. What is one upon cos? Sine upon cos. So this will become sec square theta. And this is the third identity. Tan square theta plus one is equal to sec square theta. Now usually this is also written as one plus tan square theta is equal to sec square theta. It's just a way of writing it. You're just writing the one first. So one plus tan square theta is equal to sec square theta. These are the three very, very important trigonometric identities. Done? Yes. Okay. So whenever I say trigonometric identities, these three formulas should come in your mind. Sine square theta plus cos square theta is equal to one. First one. Second, one plus cot square theta is equal to cosec square theta. And third one, one plus tan square theta is equal to sec square theta. Three trigonometric identities. We'll be using this extensively in the sums. Okay, I'll erase this. By practice, you will definitely able to remember. Okay, that 90 minus theta formulas will do it later on. So we'll just uh, try yeah. to okay. use the formulas that we already know by now. So first was a ratio formulas. Then second one was a reciprocal. reciprocal. So you should know sine and cos mm -hmm. are reciprocals of each other. Sorry, sine and cosec are reciprocals cosec. of each other. Cos and sec are reciprocals of each other. Tan and, and, and cot are reciprocals of each other. Okay, so we have a triangle, triangle ABC, a right angle triangle. I hope you can see this right angle, okay, this 90 degree right angle. So sine theta, we know sine theta is opposite upon hypotenuse. So from this triangle, can you tell me what will be sine theta? Yes. Unmute yourself. Yeah. From this triangle, sine theta, tell me the opposite and the hypotenuse. AB upon AC. Correct. So sine theta opposite upon hypotenuse is equal to AB upon AC. Cos theta, we know it is adjacent upon hypotenuse. So that will be? CC upon AC. Correct. Or CA. Correct. AC, CA, one and the same. Then tan theta, you know, opposite upon adjacent. So that will be? AB upon BC. Correct. Okay, so you have to complete 
the relations in the given ratio. So that's the formula which we studied. So sine upon cos is? Tan theta. Tan theta. So this is tan theta. Okay, this we did not study. We'll do this later. Okay, complete the equation. Sine square theta plus cos square theta so is equal one. to one. No, I don't remember all of this. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. How many practices does this have? How many? I I think approximate seven either. I think. Okay, so we'll have to revise the table. Yeah, I'll, I'll just open it, I'll open it. I'm going to write anything so I can keep this away if I'm not going to write anything. What is that? Is, is that your textbook? No, no, no. No, keep it, keep it with you. Keep it beside you. Okay, so these uh, are the activity in your textbook. So you know already what the answers are these. This two we'll do later on, okay? Complete the given relation, we'll do later on. I've done everything except those two. Okay, have you written it in your textbook? Okay, okay, good. So we need to now do the table.
Okay, so in the trigonometric table, first you have, first is a zero degree, 30 degree, 45 degree, 60 degree and 90 degree. Clear? So the angles that will be working with trigonometric are zero, 30, 45, 60 and 90. These angles will be extra and you will have to remember the values of each of the angles. And now we have the ratio. So we have sine ratio, cos, tan, which is also sine upon cos. What is one, two, three, four? Yeah, they, they, are, they are just a number for you to remember. Actually, there are different tricks to remember. Yeah, the... uh, in our school, also we were given like one trick in which uh, sign, if you like to say sign is like 0, 1 upon 2, 1 upon root 2, hmm. 3, 3, root 3 upon 2 and 1. Hmm. So cos is just hmm. sign yeah. from the right. Yes, correct, correct. Correct. That is also so. For that trick, what you're saying, you need to memorize the value of the first row. First, you need to memorize that. So I'll explain you this trick also. So suppose if you don't, this this trick is you. Suppose if you don't remember the values of the first row. Suppose Fine. if you don't. Yeah. Then. Yeah. So for that first, you just give them numbers. Okay, so you just give them numbers. You just start from 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Just put these numbers from 0 to 4. So this would be 0 corresponding to 0 degree, 1 to 30 degree, 2 to 45 degree, 3 to 60 degree, and 4 to 90 degree. Then what you do is you divide all of these numbers by 4. Okay, divide all the numbers by 4. So how much, how much is 0 divided by 4? Zero. zero. One divided by four is that one one by four itself. Two divided by four, you can reduce it. What will it become? One upon two. One upon two. Three divided by four, we can keep it as it is. You cannot reduce it. And four divided by four will be? One. One. Now, in the next step, whatever answer you have got, you have to take the square root of it. Okay, whatever answer you get, take the square root of it. So square root of zero, you'll have to take. So what is square root of zero? Zero. Zero. Take square root of all, all whatever answer you have got. Okay. So square root of zero is zero. We know that. What will be square root of one upon two? Uh, one upon four? One upon two. One upon two. Square root of one upon two? One upon two. Yeah, uh, root two. How? So you have square root. You have square root of one upon two. So you can give. Uh, distribute the square root for the numerator and denominator. Square root 1 upon square root 2. How much is square root 1? 1. 1. So, and that root 2 as root it is. Two. So, 1 upon root 2. Okay. So, that's how you get 1 upon root 2. Then, this last one, uh, 3, square root of 3 upon 4. So, so can you tell 3 you? upon root 2. Yes, correct. 3 upon root 2. And lastly, square root 1 is 1 itself. So, it was root 3 upon 2. Uh, root 3 upon 2. Root 3 upon 2. Because the root will be distributed, right? Okay. Is this clear? So, the you, yeah. first, first values you got 0, 1 by 2, 1 by root 2, root 3 by 2 and 1. These are the values in the first table for sign. So 0, 1 by 2, 1 by root 2, root 3 by 2 and 1. Is it clear up to here? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, so we'll, I'll just revise what we did till now. 
So what you do is you write first zero, one, two, three, and four. Then you divide each of these numbers by four. After dividing, you reduce it wherever it is getting reduced. You reduce it, so it got two by four. This got reduced, and then you take the square root of it. Okay, after taking the square root, whatever answer you get, that you will write in the first row here. Now, as you said, cos will be the you just write it opposite of it. Yes. Okay, so this would be one. Two three upon two, one upon root two, one upon two. Yes, one root three upon two, one upon root two, one upon two, and zero. Okay, and then tan. For tan, you need to remember this formula. Tan is sine upon cos. Okay, so you have to just divide sine upon cos to get tan. So zero divided by one is zero. Zero. So this will be zero. Now one upon two. Do it here. One upon two. That means we have to divide these two. Okay, these two has to be divided. One upon two divided by root three upon two. What will get cancelled? If you see, this is a fraction. This is also a fraction. Here, two is in the denominator. Here also two is in the denominator. So two two cancelled. What left? One upon. One upon root three. Root three. So this is one upon root three. Then for the next thing, we have to divide these two. One upon root two divided by one upon root two is this will get cancelled. So it is <coughs> one. One. Correct. Then for sixty. The second one will be root three. Yes, correct. Root three. And last is one upon zero. One divided by zero. One. Note one thing that. any no number can be divided by zero you cannot divide any number by zero so whenever such thing so when comes when you divide it becomes zero no it will not become zero you say not defined okay because it is not anything possible anything divided by zero is zero right no 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 anything divided by zero is no. not defined no no then how was zero upon 1 zero you are dividing it by 1 So there is a difference between it. Okay. So zero upon one means you are dividing it by one. So that is zero. So note one thing: zero can come in the numerator, but not in the denominator. Whenever zero comes in the denominator, means it is not defined. There is a problem there. Clear up to you? Yes. Okay. So we will stop yes. here. The remaining values we will do in tomorrow's class. Okay, I don't want you to burden you with too many formulas. Uh, and there is a one more trick to remember this. I will tell you that trick. According to me, that another trick is easy. So I will tell you, explain you that trick in the next class. So if you wonder, you can do it now also because I have a next class at six thirty. Uh, no, actually, I. Who might? Ah, uh, okay, fine. Uh, uh, so we'll do it tomorrow. And don't forget, uh, your homework would.